Do you want to use Unity's new input system but don't know where to start? Or did you have problems following other approaches? I will show you a really simple way for standard movement. From there on, we will increase the knowledge in the following episodes. Welcome, I am Valvery. I start with a new 2D project. But you can apply these basics I explained for 3D projects as well. Currently, the old input system is still the default one. So let's install the new one by clicking at Window and go to the Package Manager. In this tab here, you have to select Unity Registry. And now we should see all available packages. You can just search for Input System. Now just click install and wait. Make sure you accept the prompt, which tells you that the old input system will be deactivated. After this Unity will restart. The new input system makes it easy to support different devices, but comes with a little more initial work. But like the title of the video said, I will show you a very easy approach. At first, we have to define our inputs. Create a new folder, I call it Inputs, and in there, right-click, Create, and select right at the bottom, Input Actions. A new Input Actions file is created. You can name it whatever you want. Double-click to open the Input Actions window. In here, you can now create Actions maps, as many as you want. But for now, we'll just make one which I call Gameplay. I usually have another for the UI. And that's all for the usual small projects or game chats. Inside an action map you can now assign your keys you want to use in your game to so-called actions. You can create new actions by clicking at the plus icon. For now I will show you a simple movement, so I call it movement. You can also name it differently, but make sure you will remember this. We will need it later. Our movement will be a horizontal and vertical movement. So, button is the wrong action type. Change it to value and select as control type vector 2. Because, like I said, we have two axes to move. Now we can add the default binding or a 2D vector composite, which we will use at the moment. I call it WASD because those are the keys I want to use. You can now see it already created up, down, left and right, like the two axes for directions we want. Now select the first one at the right, on the path, you can choose the key whatever you want. Just open it, the easiest way is to click listen and type the key on your keyboard. If it's a special key, you can just type its name, like escape, and select it from there. Make sure to assign all the keys you want to use for your direction. Hit save at the top of your window, and that's it for here. So at the moment we don't have anything we could move, so let me just quickly add some assets from my last game jam. My player is just this sprite renderer object here. And I'll add a rigid body to the... So since I want two directional movement, not like a platformer where you can fall down and only walk from left to right, I'll disable the gravity. Now we're coming to the important part. There are various different approaches you could use, but I will show you the, in my opinion, easiest to understand and to use. In the next video I will expand the solution we create now. We will add a new component to our player called Player Input. In here you will link your recently created input file. You can just drag and drop or select it via the circle icon here. So I just created the action map called Gameplay. For you there might be another map name. But we can just let it be there because this is our one and only map at the moment. In this approach, this is everything we have to do here in this player input component. Now we can go to the scripting part. Create a scripts folder if you not already have run, and add a script. I call it player controller. And open it. Import the input system package by writing using Unity Engine dot input system to your import statements. 
Whenever a key inside of one of your actions is pressed, Unity will send a message to a function of yours. It's important that you call this function like your action is named with an on at the front. In my case it's on movement. Make sure to write it correct and capitalize your first letter even if your action is written in lowercase only. So whenever we would now press WASD this function would be called. But like I said earlier this isn't just a simple button press but we want a movement. So we want Unity to tell us what exactly was pressed, which is in our case a vector 2. Just define a parameter of the type input value. It's now easy to transform the input value in the type which has defined in our action. So we want the rigid body to move like a we update and not only when a button is pressed because there is like the press and hold event. So I declared a variable outside of our method so that we can reach it from everywhere. Whenever the method is called, we can now get a vector2 value out of our input value type and save it in the movement variable. Now we just need to get access to our rigid body, add a fixed update function and set its velocity. In this 2D movement we can just add vector2 as the velocity. If you want 3D movement, you will need a vector 3 for the velocity and use the y axis for your z axis. And it's as easy as that. Let's see the result. That may be not the fastest fish in the ocean. So let's give him some speed. For better adjustments, we want a variable be visible in the object inspector. I prefer private variables with the serialize field option, but you could also make a public variable. A variable is of type float, so it's a number with decimals. Now we can just multiply the speed variable with our movement vector, and that's it. Let's switch in game mode and see what we can do. Well, nothing at the moment. This is because a variable is zero, and the zero movement is like not moving at all. You can now, live in play mode, adjust your variable as you want it. This is much better than changing a number in your code and recompile every time. Just be careful, when exiting play mode, all your changes will be reset. So remember your value, add it again, and don't forget to save your scene regularly. And there he goes. Just keep swimming, little fish. For small games, like in Game Jams, this is a super way to handle your inputs. But if you want more control over your inputs, like call a function whenever a button is pressed and another when it is released, this approach is not suitable. In the next episode, I will show you how to handle your inputs better with not that much more code. That's it for this episode. If you enjoyed the content, consider liking and subscribing and I'll see you next time.